It is evident in love that shelter remains the second basic necessity of human needs after food. And as such, many individuals act desperately to have their own personal dwelling. Therefore, the need to erect solid and functional buildings to avoid unexpected collapse is very essential. Building collapse occur as a result of factors such as poor workmanship, bad design, use of soap standard building materials, foundation failure, faulty construction, extraordinary loads, among other factors. The recent case of the collapse in Ikoi still is a reference point. On the show today, we will turn our gaze on the real estate sector vis-a-vis -vis giving useful insights as to what you need to know as regards construction planning to avert tragedies. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. Welcome back. Now, the federal government approved contracts to beef up operations at some airport, POS transactions, as well as the NNPC report on subsidy payment, among others, made headlines this week. Here is the roundup. The Federal Executive Council FEC has approved three contracts to beef up operations at the Muru Tala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, and in Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. The Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sarika, briefed State House correspondents after a virtual FEC meeting presided over by Vice President Yemio Shibanjo on Wednesday at the presidential of Ila Abuja. Sarika said the second memo from Aviation was the approval for the award of contracts for the manufacturer supply, installation and operating training of disabled aircraft recovery system at Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. Point-of-sale transaction in Nigeria dropped marginally by 0.74% to $552.26 billion in October 2001, compared to $556.36 billion recorded in the previous month. This is according to recent data released by the Nigerian Interbank Settlement System. The value of POS transaction dropped despite a 33.6% increase in the volume of transaction to 91.39 million naira from 81.71 million recorded in September 2001. Further analysis of the data show that the number of POS terminal deployed in October rose by 7.6% month on month on to 764,589 in the review month. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation spent a total of 864.70 billion between January and September subsidizing petroleum motor spirit, popularly known as Petrol. The amount represents 31% of the total revenue of 2.7 trillion naira generated by the corporation between January and September. Nigeria's external reserve rose by $5.05 billion in October. The latest data from the Central Bank of Nigeria showed on Wednesday. The reserve increased from $36.78 billion on September 30 to $41.83 billion as of October 29. The Deputy Governor, Financial System Stability Director, CBN, Aisha Ahmed, at the latest Monetary Policy Committee meeting in Abuja, said the external sector trends improve as reflected in the balance of trade position, which narrowed by 52.56% to a deficit of 1.87 trillion naira in the second quarter of 2021 from 3.94 trillion naira in the first quarter. The Central Bank of Nigeria has listed its selection criteria for the newly introduced financial instrument tagged the 100 for 100 PPP, Policy on Production and Productivity. The Apex Bank made this known in a notice signed by its development finance department. It explained the selection for participating businesses would be based on the immediate impact the business has on economic growth, job creation and social impact.
And those was a roundup of uh, business and needs for this week. Building collapse is becoming a serious problem in Nigeria in general, in Lagos in particular, as it has a lot of effect on the economy, especially the development industry. Many investments today have failed due to the ways of developing property and thus lead to the waste of many lives and properties worth millions or billions of Naira. Simon Adozi, Managing Director of Adozi Leon's Homes and Realty, joins us on the show to give some useful insight on why you need to get the right plan before construction. Good evening to you, Simon. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insight and Class TV Africa. Oh, thank you for having me and good evening, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Nigeria. All right, uh, good evening to you again. So Simon, let's talk about uh, the need for have, to have um, a construction plan because a lot of Nigerians are actually talking right now as regards uh, the building collapse we just occurred in Lagos on November the 1st and uh, you know, millions of Naira have been lost and of course lives of course you know, have been lost. But specifically, uh, why do we need to have a construction plan before we even start uh, building? It's just like asking, um why do you need to have a plan before doing anything you need to have a plan you need uh, planning makes you see the end planning makes you, you you need to have a thought through over every process so um building is a very sensitive thing and it requires that you put in a lot of um safety measures you put in a lot of um um thought into it and you put in a lot of regulations into it before you go out because uh, lives are totally depending, uh, dependent on it. So um, you need to have a plan because it is it's a must, <laughs> if I will use that word. It's a must. Having a building plan is, uh, is non-negotiable. Non All right, uh, Simon, let's still talk more about a um, building plan. For instance, uh, I... Um, just an individual, but I want to build, I want to own a property, and I want to use it for business. And uh, what exactly do I need to know precisely so I don't end up, uh, you know, uh, putting money into that particular investment at the end of the day, you know, or not have issues of um, building collapse? What are the step-by-step -step approach I need to follow in order to have um, this building on ground then to, you know, to the, as much level as I've been approved for? So um, we go from there. Um, you want to have a building, you must have an architectural plan. Um, from the architectural plan, that's where you know what you want, how many bedrooms you want, what you want, how many levels, how many floors you want to go. That's when you know what the size of land can actually carry. So from the architectural drawing, um, you have what we call structural drawing to know uh, the kind of uh, weights that the structure can carry in, in terms of those people building um, high rise or something more than two or three floors. And uh, you need a structural drawing. You need the, what we call mechanical electrical just uh, for safety measures to know where your plumbing pipes are going to be situated um, so that it will not cause hazards. Uh, to know where your electrical wiring and all that, so that uh, you will not get a mixture of um, water pipes and uh, uh, electricity all in one. So, uh, I mean, it could cause uh, electrocution and all that. So, you need a basic plan. So, you need an MIE plan, mechanical and electrical plan. You need an um, architectural plan, and you need a structural plan. Now, when you have all these things, um, you take it for approval. Approval from the government agency. Am I allowed to build such this kind of structure in this kind of place. So that is where you get the approval that you actually need. Um, that's where they tell you that this is the regulation covering this particular area. So when you find that out, you will now know that, okay, uh, I have permission to build. Now they'll give you approval to say, okay, because they will ask you to bring your architectural drawing, your structural drawing. They have experts that will look into it and say, okay, it's, it's okay, you are good to go. So you as an individual that wants to build, you must go through these things. An architectural, an architectural drawing, a structural drawing, a mechanical drawing, an electrical drawing. So these are the most important thing. Okay. So some people, yeah, you know, some people, if you want to build, you must know. So the structure will determine the kind of foundation you need to have. If yeah, you need I to understand have a five foundation now. Yes. or a raft foundation. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, you've mentioned a lot of, um, you know, 
expertise that come into place when you talk about the business of um, you know, construction or constructing houses or offices or what, as the case may be. But you are uh, a realtor and uh, you actually are involved in uh, you know, developing buildings and of course uh, houses and other you know, you know, infrastructure in Lagos. But specifically, would you say that the average Nigerian actually takes uh, the pain of going through all of this process, you talked about the M and E design. You talked about them um, having an architect. What really plays out here in Nigeria? Okay, what really plays out is that people see a house, they like the facade, they like the exterior, they go inside, they are wowed by the interior. Uh, they just bring out their checks and they pay. Uh, one thing that makes us unique, and one thing that makes me um, exceptional from the others, is that I would at least show you um, things that we see the building plan approval, we see um, the drawings, we see both the structure and the mechanical drawing. Then if, um, and it must be stamped and sealed by a recognized structural engineer or an architect. It must be, and uh, the architect must be a member of um, either, uh, okay, the architect must be a member of their, we call them ACOM, Architect, um, Architectural Union of Nigeria, I think so. And um, he must be a member because you, you must see their stamp on it. So those are the things that I look out for when I'm giving my, um, when I'm doing my own development. I am currently doing one and I, I put all these things into play. You know, the, 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 the presence of the presence of a safety man on your site is so important, but people overlook it. Um, because that's the person that will tell you that these are hazards, these are things that you need to put into consideration before getting this building to uh, go where it is. Um, building collapse can be, that, can be avoided, uh, just like every other accident can be avoided if we follow and do the right thing. Indeed, if um, um, Nigerians followed and did the right things, I would not have um, you know, incidences of um, building collapse uh, like we have almost all the time across Lagos and other cities here in Nigeria. Yeah. But let's still talk uh, for one minute concerning that particular building that collapsed um, in the uh, Ikoyi area of Lagos. Yeah. Um, you know, lives indeed have been lost and of course that m property was actually massive and I'm sure that actually ran into a uh, millions of naira but uh, in your opinion now uh, what have uh, the developers um, failed to see in that regard okay um my condolences to uh, the families that were lost and uh, everybody that have uh, one or two loved ones uh, in that building it's uh, it's a disaster and we are all mourning in lagos state because uh, I think from the last count, there were like uh, almost uh, 50 people or, or uh, dead bodies already pulled out. It's, it, it's quite tragic. And um, we commiserate with all the families. But the right thing needs to be done. Um, most times, yeah, I would say is the negligence of humans that makes accidents like this uh, happen. So um, accidents don't just happen there must have been signs. It must have given you a whole lot of signs. If the building is not uh, well structurally, you must have seen some cracks on the walls, some uh, little things here or there. But you know what? If you do not pay attention to those little things, uh, which I think that is the case that happened there, um, this kind of large uh, uh, grief is what we put the nation and the state into. So um, it could have been avoided, but like I said, <coughs> accident can be uh, can be avoided. So um, in the case of the Koi incident, um, we hear that they get, they actually got approval. Yeah, even if you get approval, uh, it still boils down on the humans on the site to do the right thing. For crying out loud, if you were supposed to use a load-bearing block, which means which is a mixture of uh, uh, cement and um, uh, stone right. dust right. to build a high-rise, mm. don't use a mixture of cement and sand block. Mm. That alone, you might want to cut cost, 
But that alone is already putting the lives of a whole lot of people in danger. So if we can just do the right thing, if we can just do the right thing, accidents, this kind of building collapse are exceptionally avoidable. Yes, we can avoid it. Now, government have given approvals. They come, they see for themselves. But when they are not there, what do the people on site do? When the government is not there, do they use the right regulatory? You know, people take some materials for testing. They just use a few of them and they flood the whole place with um, fake materials and all that. So this is not the time to blame anybody. Yeah. This is not the time to throw the blame game. Okay. Uh, this is a time for us to actually search our co conscience. And this is a time to ask a question. Do we have the particular labor force mm. to even deliver the housing deficit in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. okay. A lot of quacks are out there calling themselves bricklayers. And when they don't do their job properly, uh, they put everybody uh, into jeopardy. You know, you cannot just say, I, I want to enter into construction because I'm hungry. No, it's a professional thing because the life of people will depend on it. All right. So um, Simon, there are a lot of things that we look into. Right. Yes. A lot of things indeed we need to look into. But Simon, as we begin to yeah. wrap up now this particular discourse, now you talked about um, the need to eradicate, uh, eradicate rather the issue of um, quackery in the industry and of course having professionals. You are into the development of buildings and of course you are a realtor. How would you say... Uh, uh, sanity can be ensured in this particular industry so that would have uh, uh, buildings that can stand you know across both uh, you know when you measure them with um, those that we have internationally and of course uh, even if we want to go and get as much um, high-rise buildings that we want in Nigeria we can actually you know beat our chest and say that uh, these buildings will stand in the next 50 to 100 years quickly as we round off so because I have worked with um, a lot of artisans, I will always advocate for a technical school. You know, bricklayers can go to school, carpenters can go to school. Um, if I want to hire anyone, I want to be sure that that person has gone through a former, um, an informal training that uh, that is backed by the government. You understand? That, that's um, what gives me assur assurance of their professionalism. Now, a lot of things, um, uh, people just, you know, see, <laughs> it's it's a human thing. It's not real. The, the, the government regulatory body, they are doing their job. They are exceptional in what they do. I, encounter, I, I have an encounter with uh, them yesterday, and they were all around going through sites, look, making sure that standards are being uh, followed and procedures are being um, observed. But the little can they do <laughs> when um, um, the people that are in charge of those projects are determined to do what they want to do. So most times, um, training artisans is very, very important. Can we just open a technical school for people that build in high rises? So anybody that goes through that system, you know that you can be sure of the quality of work that that person will put out. All right, and thank you so much. Indeed, uh, you have actually spoken the, the minds of our professionals in the sector. And uh, if we actually uh, did all of these uh, you know, things that you have said, that uh, the issues of um, building collapse in Nigeria would actually be reduced to the barest minimum. Uh, many thanks uh, once again, Simon Adozi. He is the managing director at Dozillion Homes and Realty. And he joined us on the show today to look at uh, real estate getting the right plan before construction. We do appreciate your time. Once again. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Simon. As we wrap up, we'll leave you with reactions from Nigerians on the recently launched digital currency, the e -Naira. That's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin Akadonye. Let's do it again next time. Many thanks for watching. Uh, I read somewhere that Nigeria e -Naira is the second largest after that of China. And China also ban, also put a place a ban on, uh, on cryptocurrency. So I believe we are following the path of China. And China has been our major, uh, uh, where, where, our major, where we do our major imports. Probably following their own path may give credence and value to our Naira. Okay, Naira, uh, Naira has come to stay now. <laughs> 
If Naira had come to say, I believe if Naira had come, we must start from somewhere. But it's only that uh, Nigeria, um, uh, I still believe that uh, digitally we are not competent yet. That is why me, I don't believe in all those things, in Naira and all that. You understand? But we must start from somewhere. Yes, in Naira have come to say, we must start from, it's a good uh, development for Nigeria. It's a good development. It has come to say, but we must start from somewhere, you know? I see nothing wrong in it, but as a matter of fact, it doesn't have any value to Nigeria. It doesn't have any serious value. The economy is down, the Naira is the value. What is the value of the Naira? Except to create a room for more looting, because you now have time to keep and hide your money in a place where it cannot easily be discovered. That is the truth. So you actually give the politician opportunity to keep their money away from scrutiny. Because when the money is saved in blockchain, you cannot trace it. So that is just the truth. So the government itself is not sincere. So the politician wants to loot. That is why. So he has nothing to do with the masses. He does not benefit us. He does not put food in an pocket. He does not have any effect in the Nigeria economy. As a matter of fact, he only favors the politician. I said I believe in that here in Naira. Let's see how it's going to go. I believe normally there is no policy that usually work in Nigeria, but let's see how they are going to implement it, whether it will stretching our Naira or it will not. But the past six years, the federal government has shown nothing but failure on its part. So until they show me how they tend to make the people's lives very much more comfortable, I'll take them serious. But to me, I'm, I'm sort of confused because this is the same, this is the same uh, president or this is the same government that banned cryptocurrency. And you're coming out to tell us you have an initiative of Inaira. I mean, that will tell you that there's something wrong with it. Because number one, I, I was trying to um, uh, enroll on the Inaira and they asked me for BVN. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, why would you ask me of my BVN? We have other cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency uh, 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 platform where you can, you can run your transactions without so many questions and all, so many, uh, uh, so many, uh, so many details and all that. So coming, to, come, coming up with the Inaira something and you're banning the cryptocurrency, I mean, that, that, that should be, that, that is telling us that there's something the government or something, the president or something, they're not telling us. So to me, I don't buy the Inara stuff. I don't buy it. So if you're cutting off the cryptocurrency, cut it off totally and stop, stop with the bringing up. I mean, that's it.